Like the nude, the glass treated the body as a mechanical object. Why on glass? Duchamp explained. Because the trans mainly the transparency of the glass. I wanted to... I've, I had always noticed that the trouble with an oil painting and easel painting is you never know how to do the, the background. You make a portrait or you make some scene or some still life and then comes the background. What are you going to do in the background? You put something in the background and it always falls, or at least very seldom justified. It's just a filling up canvas. With the glass, you don't have to do that. The glass is just transparent, and you put anything behind you wish, and you change it every day if you wish as well. And that was for me an element of novelty to convince me I could go on with it. There's also some kind of literary part to it, uh, it was intended to have every item on the glass, every design on the glass, explained with a lang with the language, with language, with words. And it was nothing spontaneous about it, which of course is a great objection on part of aestheticians. They want the, the subconscious to speak by itself. I don't, I don't care. And it was the opposite in that way. So at the end of eight years, even unf not finished, I stopped to, I decided to stop. So what is this thing? Well, it's a machine, but we'd be better off calling it a project for an unfinished contraption that could never be built because its use was never clear, because in turn it parodies the language and the forms of science without the slightest regard for scientific probability or cause or effect. Supposing that an engineer were to use this thing as a blueprint, he'd be in deep trouble. Because the large glass is never explicit and looked at from the point of view of technical systems, it's simply absurd. The notes that Duchamp left to go with it are the most scrambled instruction manual that you can imagine. But they're deliberately scrambled. For instance, he talked about the thing running on a mythical fuel of his own invention called love gasoline, which passed through filters into feeble cylinders which activated a desire motor, none of which would really have meant very much to Henry Ford. But this is a meta-machine that takes us away from the real world of machinery into that of allegory, with the naked bride up there perpetually disrobing herself in the top half and down below, the poor little bachelors in their empty jackets, endlessly grinding away, signalling their frustration to the girl above them. In fact, this thing is an allegory of profane love, which, Marcel Duchamp would have us believe, is the only sort that is left in the 20th century. Its real text was written by Sigmund Freud in The Interpretation of Dreams, published in 1900. The imposing mechanism of the male sexual apparatus, said Freud, lends itself to symbolization by every sort of indescribably complicated machinery. But the male mechanism of the large glass is not imposing at all. The bachelors are just uniforms, like marionettes. According to Duchamp's notes, they try to indicate their desire to the bride by making the chocolate grinder turn and it grinds out an imaginary milky stuff like semen, which squirts up through those rings, but can't get into the bride's half of the glass because of that bar. And so the bride is condemned always to tease, and the bachelor's fate is endless masturbation. In one sense, the bride stripped bare is a glimpse into hell, a peculiarly modernist hell of repetition and loneliness. But you could also see it as a declaration of freedom, if you recall the crushing taboos against masturbation that were in force when Duchamp was young. It was the symbol of rebellion against one's parents, and to that extent, the large glass is a free machine, or at least a defiant machine. But it was also a sad machine, a testament to indifference, that emotion of which Duchamp was the master. When the large glass was broken in its crate while being shipped, how did he feel? Nothing. Not much. I was... Uh, well, no, I was not. Because I'm fatalist, maybe, enough to take anything as it comes along. And fortunately, a little later, when I look at the brakes, I love the brakes. 
which it happened to be that two two panes, glass panes, on top of one another, with paints on it, holding a bit. When they break on the vibration of being transported flat, you see, on a on a, a truck, the the brakes take a similar uh, direction in the two panes. So when you put them on top of one another, they seem to continue the same the same brakes as though I had it done in done it in purpose. Duchamp's finely tuned indifference is one of the divides between the late machine age and the time in which we live. The large glass was a long way from the optimism and the sense of possibility with which greater painters but less sophisticated men than Duchamp greeted the machine in those long lost days before World War I.